Are you struggling to get your small budget to work on Google Ads? Well, look no further. In today's video, I'm gonna go through everything you're probably doing wrong inside your account so you can improve that and have some success with Google Ads. First off, my name's Matt. I'm the owner and operator of Tradesman Digital Marketing. We're a Google Ads agency that focuses on lead generation for our clients. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I would do and what we've done for many of our clients that have a smaller budget but still want to be able to run Google Ads profitably. The first thing to do is start small and start very focused. This was what we do for the majority of our accounts anyways, but people generally have the opposite approach. They'll have 20 ad groups, they'll have over 100 plus keywords all in broad match, and they're just wasting money left and right. If you don't have that actual massive reserve and funds, this is probably a really bad place to start. So what I would recommend doing is coming up with a game plan for your most profitable services. So for example, if you're doing fencing, your most profitable service is probably not fencing repair, it's probably installing the fence. Same with pool installation. If you're doing pools, it's probably not selling the chlorine, it's probably installing the actual pool. I hope you're starting to get my point here. Go for the most profitable services you offer and double down on them. The reason being is if we can make those services profitable, we can generally extrapolate on that and start offering other services as well. But if our most profitable services aren't working on Google Ads, chances are the lower end services that we don't make as much money on aren't going to work either. So we need to start small. Now, what does that actually look like starting small? I'm gonna show you here inside of our campaign. And we've got two campaigns in this account. I'm just gonna go and click on this one just for the sake of example. And as you can see here, we have 16 ad groups in here, all for digital marketing. This is our demo account. We, we tested a whole bunch of stuff way back when in this account, and this is way too big. We should have started off very, very small. We should have started off with one ad group. For example, if we were doing digital marketing, we should have focused on who is going to be our most profitable customer. So that could have been, maybe it's roofers, maybe it is solar, maybe it is HVAC. I don't know, but I would have done one ad group that focuses on that. So for example, I would have done just digital marketing roofing. And honestly, we're a Google ads agency. This should have been Google ads for roofing. And then the keywords are Google ads roofing services. That would have been great. That would have been super focused. But when we click on here and we go to check out these actual keywords, roofing, advertising, marketing, roofing, these are very vague. They're also in broad match. This should be either in phrase or exact match. It really depends on the amount of search volume here, but it should not be in broad match at all. It should be phrase or exact match. This should be something with high buying intent. It shouldn't just be roofing advertising. Now, how do we find actual good high buying intent keywords? And we use the keyword planner. You can locate that here under tools, and it is actually under the planning section of this. We're going to go to the actual actual keyword planner. I have an entire video on actually how to find good keywords. I'd recommend watching it. It's quite extensive, but it will give you a great idea of how to find those high buying intent keywords that make you money, have high conversion rates, and are generally going to lead to a lot more account success than going after vague keywords like roofing advertising or something like that, which could be in a whole bunch of different advertising, right? The next thing that I also look at is niche targeting. So if we're running a campaign, what areas and at what time should we even run that campaign? If we're not able to respond to our call quickly or our email form submission quickly, there's no point in really running the campaign because your closing rate for the actual sale is going to drop off significantly and you're not gonna make any money on the back end. You should be able to respond to these people very, very quickly within 30 minutes, not two or three days later. That is going to be a massive game changer and for a lot of companies, they don't realize this. They just think, ah, if I get back to the lead whenever, as long as it's relatively quickly, it's fine. That's not the case. You need to respond to these people as quickly as possible, preferably under five minutes because people are still on the internet. They're looking for other companies. And if you can respond to them and be the first company to contact them, chances are they're going to be much more likely to close and actually go with you instead of the competition. Now, how do we actually change the daily schedule and the actual locations. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about locations in a second, but we're gonna click on our actual campaign that we wanna focus on. Keep in mind, location settings are set at the campaign level, not the ad group level, super important. Hit locations down here, or sorry, ad schedule, I should say, because we're doing that first. And as you can see, our ads are eligible to show all the time. This is a problem, especially if we are a service-based business and we can't respond to the phone 24 seven. So I'd highly recommend choosing the hours you can respond to best. Uh, it's very, very simple to actually edit this. You can just click the big blue plus icon here and then switch it. Let's do Mondays to Fridays. Let's do 
you know, maybe 8 a.m. till 3 p.m. I don't know what your hours are, but as long as you can effectively respond, go with that. We normally see at our company Tradesman Digital Marketing that a lot of our customers perform better on Mondays to Fridays, just because the weekdays, people don't have as much time to look around as opposed to Saturdays and Sundays. Of course, there are services that are different. Like if you have an emergency plumbing repair, probably not going to be looking around that much. But Mondays to Fridays generally perform better. So you might want to start out with Mondays to Fridays, seeing how that performs for your ads, and then maybe later testing the weekends as well. But normally people have a lot more time on the weekends to look around and your closing rate dips a little bit. Now, how do we actually address the location settings and locations themselves are pretty easy to do as well. This is where our ads are going to be displayed. And of course, location settings overall aren't perfect in Google ads, but they're pretty close. And what I would highly recommend doing is figuring out where are your prime locations? Where are you gonna make the most amount of money off of? Is it 500 miles or 500 kilometers from your business or is it within 10 kilometers? Maybe you don't have enough search volume for that 10 kilometers, but it's better to see where your most profitable areas are and test there and then expand outward over time. You don't wanna start with a deal or a service that is like super far away or in another state and maybe you break even, maybe you don't. That's hard to actually differentiate with. You wanna start with your most profitable locations, you as the business owner should know that you'll know where your target audience is. And maybe they live in a specific city or a specific region. And you want to highlight that area more. So even for us, if we do commercial pool installation, or let's say luxury pool installation, there's going to be neighborhoods that are more interested in that as opposed to lower end pool installation, and you need to know the difference. Now to actually adjust this, it's pretty easy, just click on the pencil icon here. And we can either add or remove locations, we can remove like that, or we can also also add a radius as well, which is great for service based businesses who just want to actually put down a pin. And uh, you can see here pin mode, we can put a let's do 20 mile radius around Burlington hit include easy peasy. If you want to do a specific city, you could type in Hamilton, you could do include nearby, this is already included. That's why I can't click it, you can also hit nearby cities as well. And then hit include there. And as you can see, it pops up, it's very easy, but it does take a decent amount of time to actually do this. Most people are not going to take the time we've seen other Google ads companies out there that will just add different states or different provinces. And that company doesn't even operate in them. And I'm like, Oh my God, you're just burning a ton of money. And they'll come back with, well, we're generating conversions. And it's like, that's great, but the company can't service that region. It's very important to get first principles down pat. Where are we targeting? Who are we targeting? That stuff needs to be identified before even starting this campaign. A lot of people try and figure this out later. This should be priority one, figuring out where and when we're actually gonna serve these ads so we can actually target the consumers and the audiences we want to go after that are actually gonna generate sales for us. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna look at is your actual ads and how they're formed. If you're doing some sort of business, you wanna to indicate to the customer what happens next inside of your ad copy. Normally, what we do is we have a principle for every single one of our ads, identify the problem, give some type of feature or benefit, and then lead with a call to action. So the customer knows that, hey, we know what your problem is. Maybe you're looking for fencing installation. We offer a 30 year warranty on all of our fences. And if you click on our ad, it's a free call for a quote. This is a very simple and easy framework to work with. Is it perfect? No, we always have to test, but it's better than nothing. And a lot of companies, they'll just put vague stuff up like fencing company or looking for fencing near me. And then they have no benefits, no features, or we've been in business for 50 years. And it's like, that's great. I have a fencing problem. I don't care how long your business has been in business. I have a fencing problem. People are selfish about that and they don't care about your business. They care how you can help them and solve their problem. And that is something that so many people overlook. So what we're going to do here is come over to our campaigns, actually our ad groups, more specifically, let's go back to our what was it? It was roofing, I believe. Yeah, roofing, we're going to come back here. And we're going to actually look at our ads in this campaign, or this ad group, I should say. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch of ads, normally, you're going to want to aim for three out of three ads in every single ad group. The reason you want three out of three ads is essentially it gives Google more opportunity to test and get a higher click through rate. And as you can see, click through rate here is 16%. That's normally pretty good. Uh, what you can use is a document called WordStream. They have all the click through rates online for each and every industry. And it will go down where your click through rate should be and what you should aim for. It's an awesome document. I'll link it down below, but it is going to be super important. The reason for this is essentially you can get a higher expected click through rate. What that does is it increases quality score, which normally lowers your cost per click, which means you can get more clicks out of your campaign and more leads, which is super important for overall sales. Another thing good ad copy does is it gets rid of the people who aren't interested. If you just have a vague ad that says HVAC or fencing or pools or pool company, 
that's going to be something that the customer doesn't really know what you're offering. But if your ad says looking for local pool installation, 20 year warranty, click now for a free quote on your in-ground pool or something like that, the customer knows exactly what you're talking about. And it disqualifies a lot of those people who are looking for, you know, swimming pools near them just to go swim in. That's something great advertising does as well. This is why putting pricing in your actual ad can be very effective, especially if you're on the higher end pricing where say you're selling grand pianos for $50,000 a pop. Some people can afford that and others can't, but if they know the pricing on front, they won't even click on your ad and waste your money, which is another great thing about having good ad copy. The next thing I would highly, highly recommend is using some sort of landing page. You can do this on a WordPress site. You can do this pretty much free online with like Google sites or something like that. We use a website called Landingly. It's awesome. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's cheap, easy to use. And honestly, I can't recommend it enough. It gives you a whole bunch of templates to actually build these landing pages and it allows you to convert traffic and people at a much higher rate. So for example, we normally see sending traffic to a website anywhere from zero to about 10%, 10% so very on the high end. But for landing pages, you can expect anywhere from 20 to 40% once the campaign is optimized. And this is a massive boost. You can literally quadruple the amount of conversions and leads you're getting overnight, meaning you can essentially quadruple the amount of sales you're getting overnight just by using a simple landing page. And one of the reasons landing pages are so great is that they're simple. They don't allow the person to look around. The best landing pages only have one or two calls to action. Normally, either you call them or they submit a form. That's all it does. It provides social proof, it loads quickly. The person doesn't have to spend a day looking around your site to figure out what you offer. Whereas opposed to a website, you've got 5,000 links that people can click on, move around. And what happens is a mental phenomenon called cognitive load builds up. People get stressed out essentially. And they're like, I'll just go look for a company that's easier to work with because this website's super complicated. And I know you might think, well, I can use a website easily. And it's like, yeah, that's great. But the majority of people are just gonna get frustrated and leave, especially if your website loads slowly, which a lot of websites are prone to doing. I'd highly recommend using a simple landing page. It can literally quadruple your conversions overnight. I'll leave the link for landing lead down below, but honestly, any type of landing page is going to be far superior than that of a website. Now, the second last thing I want to address is you need to be tracking everything. In order to get the most out of Google ads, Google's AI needs to know what is working and what's not working. If it doesn't have any conversion tracking to work with, you're just guessing, and that's not a good place to be. Google's AI is extremely powerful, but it needs that data. Now, how do we actually set all that conversion tracking up? And I have two completely free videos online to walk you through on how to build it on Landingly. Uh, honestly, there's a gazillion tutorials on how to set up conversion tracking properly. Ours are simple. They go over the phone tracking and then also the actual form submission, which is essentially all you need if you're doing service-based businesses. If you're doing something complicated like e-commerce, of course, look up something different, uh, but this is gonna be so something super, super important. So Google can optimize with that actual data. And for us, we normally start our campaigns off and maximize clicks and then switch over to the actual target CPA, which is Google's smart bidding strategy. It's utilizing that AI. The massive difference that provides is incredible. We've seen campaigns that are barely getting any conversions in the account with maximized clicks go to the actual smart bidding strategy and they're getting multiple conversions a day just because the AI is so good at identifying your potential customer. Of course, if you ever want to get to conversions and check out which are in your account, you can come over here to goals under conversions is summary click on that and you can scroll down and see all of the actual conversion data in here now the final thing I would recommend doing is optimizing your account on a regular basis one of the most important things early on is figuring out what keywords are working and what ones aren't and adding negatives I'm going to show you exactly how to do that so we're going to come in here to our search keywords as you can see these are the keywords we want to go after however if it's in broad match or phrase match even exact match you're going to get unrelated keywords that we don't want to go after in order to get rid of them you're going to come over here to insights and search terms and what essentially we're gonna do is add them as negative. So you can click on this and hit add as negative, and then just go through this entire list, figure out which ones are applicable to your business and which ones aren't. This takes time and a lot of people aren't willing to do it, but it will save you a ton of money in the long run. Now, if you wanna continue optimizing your Google Ads account, I would highly recommend checking out our Google Ads optimization checklist. It walks you through everything to do on a weekly, monthly, and three month basis. It also lets you jot down your results so you can see you're making progress month over month. Also, I'll leave the WordStream document here that I was talking about for click-through rates, conversion rates, and I think it's even the cost per click as well in that document. Amazing document, by the way, at the bottom of here so you guys can just easily get to it. Now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding Google Ads, feel free to leave a comment down below. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Take care and I wish you all well.